Hello! Welcome to part one of our two part video about using the edit tab in Studio One. Um, this video is going to be focused on editing audio in particular. So, f as an example, if you saw the earlier video on the um, effects and instruments and how to use those, I played a song during that. And there was a, a sampled vocal. Um, I wanted to show you as an example of how the edit feature works, how I did that. As a refresher, I'm just going to play the part of it that we're going to be looking at, um, which is this right here. You, um, you had, you, you, you. So that was obviously without the surrounding music. I just wanted you to hear that vocal part. Now. To access the edit feature, all you need to do is just hit the edit button down here and it will automatically pull up based on what track you have selected. Um, currently I have just this bass audio track down here. That, that you, um, you had. So what we can do with the edit feature is you'll notice that a lot of these up here um, the buttons in the edit pane are the exact same as the cursor based controls. So if you're unfamiliar with any of these, I'll call them out as I use them. Um, but there is the cursor based um, uh, buttons and, and actions uh, section of the libguide. So just go ahead and take a look at that if you want to refresh it while you're working. So in this sample part here, right, I'm just taking the word that um, after the have you ever had a dreams right and just applying that rhythmically um, so I'm gonna go ahead and mute this and solo this so I'm just listening to the, the one I want to work on right so there's there's the sample I need right there so the edit pane is useful because it, it gives you a much more focused in and, and zoomable version as opposed to you can do a lot of these things also here it just gets kind of unwieldy this way you can keep looking at the big picture while also looking at a smaller picture um, to, to make editing a lot easier so all I really need to do is just cut use the cut tool and there's the word that I want right so I'm going to open up a second track to drag this onto, because this is what I would do. I'm also going to zoom in a little bit so I can see the little cut that I made. Great, I'm going to drag this down here. Um, and so that's, that. right, perfect. So I think keep in mind is um, whenever you're making a cut in audio, um, you want to make sure you add a fade in and a fade out um, around that audio thing, um, that audio sample, that that bit. Whether this is like a sung vocal line that you're cutting out of breath, whatever it is, you generally want to do that. Um, it will, what it does is it creates a, um, if you don't add the fade in and fade out, it will create a popping noise, um, which is, is unpleasant and might not be welcome in your mix. There are certain genres of music that will use that. If you look at like glitch music, things like that, they'll, they'll use that. It's a feature, not a bug in that case. Um, but these are, are basically just little volume ramps, right? It's saying, starting at this, the volume of this clip is zero, going up to whatever the set volume is. And then this one is all right, and we're just gonna take it down to zero. Um, so that way it's not suddenly jumping up to a volume amount. Um, great. So. Um, we've done that, so now we just need to apply that rhythmically. Um, I need to remember exactly what the rhythms I did were. By looking up here, I'm just going to see I put them on beats 1, beats 3, and beat 4, and the second 16th note of 4. Great. So I'll just take that, I'll narrow it down to a to beat. You know, when you're sampling, you can you can use this fade out to just make it more. Whoops, I made it a little bit too much. Um, make it a little bit more uh, concise if you're just trying to get a little bit right. Right, just like that. Um, I believe if I look up here, they're about. 
they were looking at a quantization amount of 16th notes. It's interesting that they're that short. And this is, oh, I think I see what's happening. So you'll see there's a little bit of extra audio on the front here that I need to get rid of. So you'll see it's, it's not letting me get rid of that little bit. That's because snap is enabled here. So I'm going to remove snap, which is helpful for when you're trying to line stuff up and you want to get things like on certain beats and things. But sometimes when you're trying to do little micro adjustments with this kind of sampling, you want to not do that um, and not have it snap. So now if I snap here, I'll bring it out to a 16th note. Yep, and that's what that sample sounds like. So then um, I can just go back to this part. And if you press D, there's a shortcut to duplicate. Um, it will duplicate the sample you currently have selected. And this works for both MIDI sections and um, audio sections as well, right? And so we just go ahead and, and now in the smaller view, I can more easily put it where I want it. So I'm gonna put that here. And then we'll also do it down here, give it that, give it that, and there you go. So now we have, right? And that's all. Um, basically, what you can do with this edit pane is just have a smaller, more micro control. Um, there's not really any particularly different buttons when you're editing audio. I just recommend using it for ease of use because um, you'll often want to be more zoomed out on a project so you can see you're looking at larger sections, you know, and this lets you get there and do some very fine, fine tuning. And, th and that's all. So thank you so much. If you have questions, um, obviously refer to the lib guide. And then if you have further questions or want to play around with it, come down to the recording studio. I'll be more than happy to help you out. Um, thank you so much and have a good day.